Can I start by thanking Piers Walcott, who has overseen and acting as the returning officer for this election over the last few weeks. We sent out 32,757 ballot papers to members. We received back 15,405 ballot papers. The results of the election are, in third place, with 2,775 votes, or 18.1%, John Rees Evans. In second place, with 2,973 votes, or 19.3%, is Suzanne Evans. And therefore, the successful candidate and new leader of the UK Independence Party with 9,622 votes, 62.6% .6 of the vote, Paul Nuttall. Okay, thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, what a wonderful uh, reception. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking uh, everyone uh, involved in the leadership election, particularly uh, the returning officer. It has been a well-drawn, fair and good-humoured contest. Indeed, one journalist said that it had been boring, another said that it hadn't made much media attention, but actually, after the past couple of months, Oh, that was his big moment. It was, and it, that wasn't us that pulled the plug, I have to say. Uh, we're, Nigel, we're just trying to... Nigel Farage is just tr trodden on a cable. <laughs> we're trying to re-establish <laughs> comms there. Uh, that is Paul Nuttall, the new leader of UKIP, uh, won by a pretty uh, comprehensive 62.6% .6 of the votes, some 15,000 votes. Let's return to central London. We've got, got the connection and back. my new team will ensure that that mandate is swiftly put into effect. The key word in my last sentence was team, and I will build a team of all talents from all wings of the party. <laughs> to that end, my first appointment is my deputy leader. He is someone who has backed my campaign and bought into my call for unity from the very beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Whittle. My second appointment is my party chairman. He's someone who has grown in stature during the summer months and has emerged from the shambles with his reputation enhanced. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Oakden. My third appointment will be my principal political advisor. He is someone who I believe has one of the most perceptive and acute political brains in British politics today, Patrick O'Flynn.
I will be making more announcements regarding appointments, both party officers and spokespeople, over the next 72 hours. However, there will be one theme, unity, because only unity breeds success. People do not vote, join or donate to divided parties. So those within the party who want to come together and unite, I say, we have a great and successful future. To those who do not want to unify and want to continue fighting the battles of the past, then I'm afraid that your time in UKIP is coming to an end. I say this because, as I said in my conference speech back in September, uh, the party has resembled a jigsaw that has been tipped onto the floor. The events of last week simply highlight that fact. Today is the day that we start to put the UKIP jigsaw back together. It is day zero. It is a new beginning. And that means not only paying lip service to my call for unity, but it means practicing what we preach. It means all factions of the party coming together. It means bygones being bygones. It means being prepared to get round a table, talk and sort out our differences. Just as I saw it as my duty to stand in this election to bring us together, the party has a duty to unite those at the top of the party. Owe it not only to our membership, not only to the four million people who voted for us last year, but to the 17 and a half million people who went out and voted for Brexit. <laughs> the country needs a strong UKIP more now than ever before. For if UKIP ceases to be an electoral force, then there will be no impetus on Theresa May and her government to give us real Brexit. And what we will end up with is some sort of mealy-mouthed, backsliding version, which doesn't allow us to control our own borders, which doesn't allow us to sign our own trade deals, which doesn't allow us to make all of our laws. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be a betrayal of the British people, and a united UKIP under my leadership will never, ever allow that to happen. We are engaged in a political tug of war at the moment over what kind of Brexit we will get. On one end, you have the tired old establishment figures of Tony Blair, John Major and Paddy Ashdown, who all want us to remain within the single market. And on the other end, there is UKIP, which is committed to enacting the will of the people. And that means taking back control, control over our borders, control over our finances, control over our laws. We will hold the government's feet to the fire electorally and ensure that Brexit really does mean Brexit. Great seems to be a word used quite a lot at the moment in politics. Indeed, Donald Trump spoke about making America great again. Under my leadership, we will ensure that this country gets the Brexit that it voted for on June the 23rd. And then we will put the great back into Britain. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing, isn't it, after the summer and autumn that we've had, that UKIP is still polling 13%. It is clear that there is a bank of people out there who are never going to return to the establishment parties. They are UKIP through and through. And look at the platform that we have. We have 20 MEPs, or we did last time I looked. We have an MP three members of the House of Lords, eight Assembly members, and most importantly, 500 councillors working hard in council chambers right across the country. And I say most importantly, because I see councils as the gateway to Westminster. We have a tremendous platform upon which to build and build 
we will, because there are open goals in British politics today. But UKIP has to be on the pitch to kick the ball into the back of the empty net. And that open goal is no more apparent than when it comes to the Labour Party. Today, the Labour Party has ceased to speak the language or address the issues of working people. They have a leader that will not sing the national anthem, a shadow chancellor who seems to admire the IRA more than he does the British Army, a shadow foreign secretary who sneers at the English flag, and a shadow home secretary who advocates unlimited immigration. They have lost touch. They are more at home talking about the issues that swirl around the Islington dinner party than the issues that matter in working class communities. So whilst Jeremy Corbyn and his Labour Party debate the Palestine question, fair trade and climate change, we instead will debate and talk about issues that concern real working people in real working class communities. We will continue to call for a fair but firm immigration control that protects wages and ensures that British workers are not undercut. We will, we will call for sentences to mean what they say and promote policies that protect innocent victims and not career criminals. We will promote aspiration and social mobility and ensure that working class kids get the same start in life as their middle class counterparts. We will champion education by ability and not wealth. We will support the military to the hilt. We will commit to an increase in defence expenditure and ensure that our brave boys and girls in the armed forces have the best equipment possible. We will also honour the military covenant and ensure that those who are brave enough to put their lives on the line to protect this country are looked after when they return home. It's the least we can do. We will also be committed to protecting and investing in the National Health Service and slashing a foreign aid budget that is costing this country right now around £25 million every single day. We will also continue to talk about the issues that the other parties do not want to touch. We will not be afraid to say that female genital mutilation and forced marriage has no place in 21st century Britain. And for that matter, neither do courts where the word of a woman is only half that of a man. <laughs> Finally, whilst we as a party believe in the United Kingdom and are unionists to our fingertips, under my leadership we will champion a fair devolution deal for England and we will promote the English. I say this. I say this because there is a value that unites the vast majority of British people away from the small metropolitan clique, and that value is patriotism. We fought the last election with a manifesto called Believe in Britain, and that is what the UKIP I will lead will continue to do. My ambition is not insignificant. I want to replace the Labour Party and make UKIP the patriotic voice of working people. We have achieved great things in the last five years and they should be celebrated. Uh, this was achieved under the inspirational leadership 
uh, of someone who's been my political mentor for many, many years now, uh, Nigel Farage. Please give him a round of applause. In 2014, we became the first political party since the Liberals in 1906 to win a national election outright that wasn't Labour or the Tories. In 2015, we garnered four million votes but only won one seat because of an outdated electoral system, which is another thing that has no place in Britain in the 21st century. But our greatest achievement, our greatest achievement, and in my opinion, Nigel's greatest achievement, was when in 2013 we forced the then British Prime Minister, David Cameron, into offering a referendum that he never wanted to give. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that our place in history is already secure. We were the party that forced the referendum, and then we were the party that then helped and led to deliver Brexit. But for me, this is only the beginning of the story. As Winston Churchill said after hearing of the victory of Al Alamein, this is the end of the beginning. A new chapter for our party has opened today. And whilst we must celebrate our former glories, we must, we must not be a party that is content in looking backwards. We must look forwards into the final years of this decade with positivity and excitement. We must rebuild and restructure and get the party ready for the challenges ahead. My colleagues and friends, we've been on a fantastic journey together and I have been with you every single step of the way. From delivering leaflets in local by-elections in the rain to TV studios, from standing on street stalls on cold Saturday mornings to going on the airwaves, and from meetings in old smoky work and men's clubs in the early years to standing on this platform today. I have not just talked the talk with you, I have walked the walk. I have been your party chairman, I have been your head of policy, I have been the deputy leader, and I am so grateful and honored today that the UKIP members have placed their faith in me as the leader. I will finish with what I have said at all the hustings. UKIP's future is bright, but for it to be so, UKIP must unite. And today's result has ensured that it will. There's a lot to do, ladies and gentlemen. There is a lot to do, my friends, my colleagues, my brothers and sisters in UKIP. Let's get out there and let's get cracking. Thank you.